Hey guys, it's been a while since we've done a tutorial. Uh, as you've seen, I've been doing lots of travel vlogs and things like that, and I wanted to get back to a tutorial here because I've been doing a lot of time lapses while I've been here in Africa. I apologize for the setup, it's very basic. I don't really have my setup here, so this will work, and uh, you know, you might notice a little something new. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but that's besides the point. Anyways, here we're going to talk about an in-depth tutorial on how to do time lapses using an intervalometer time lapse. That way you also get the photos because sometimes the sunsets or the time lapse that you're doing is so amazing you wish you could have the photos. This is the way to do it. I'm Will Simpson and welcome back to Exploring Photography. This is a channel where we do tutorials on the basics to the expertise of taking amazing photographs. And today we're going over time lapses using an interval timer or an intervalometer. Now, what is an intervalometer? Well, let's look it up real quick. An intervalometer is also called an interval meter or interval, interval timer. It is a device that measures short intervals of time. So, in this case, an intervalometer is a device used to tell your camera to take a photo every so often. You set the time, you set how many pictures, and it just keeps taking photos until you turn it off. Most cameras like the R5 or the Canon 6D, most Sonys, Nikons, Fujis, they all have some form of built-in interval timer. Uh, you can also, if your camera does not have an interval timer built in, you can buy what's called an intervalometer and plug it into your camera and it tells your camera to take a picture every so often. Now we're not gonna go over those specific meters, we're just gonna go over how to do it with cameras that have an interval timer in it. I'm gonna be showing you how to do it with a Canon R5. The first thing you're gonna need is obviously a tripod, a stable tripod. Now I use a Peak Design tripod that works really, really well. It's very stable, but it also has a hook on the bottom where I can hang my bag for weight. So if it's super windy, I don't have to be concerned about the tripod tipping over. Once you have it set up, you're gonna wanna set your manual focus. You're not gonna wanna use autofocus here. Set it up, put it, switch your lens to manual focus, and then set the focus. Now on mirrorless cameras, they have something called focus peaking, which turns everything in focus a little bit red or whatever color you set. Now I don't fully rely on that, so what I do, set the manual focus on the lens, go into the back of the camera, set the focus, and then zoom in by pressing the magnifying glass and dial in that focus because the focus peaking works good, but you wanna make sure that you are tack sharp on your focus before you get started. The next step is I personally use aperture priority mode, um, A on Sony, Nikon, other cameras, AV on Canon cameras. This allows the camera to automatically adjust the settings to get proper exposure. So when you're doing like a day to night time lapse or something like that, it'll keep the proper exposure. The next thing is setting up the interval timer. Press menu go to I believe number six in the camera settings and it'll say interval timer. Click enable and then you can set your second, minute and hour. You can also set however many shots you want it to take. So let's say you want it to take um, 600 shots or 300 shots or 12 shots, it doesn't matter. You can also set it to unlimited. When I'm doing a time lapse, usually I set it to unlimited and just let it run until the battery dies. The other options on the R5 are bulb timer, which is used in bulb setting, I never use it. There's also your shutter setting, so you have uh, electronic, you have electric first curtain. Uh, I might be saying this wrong because obviously the camera's right there filming me right now, so I'm not looking at it. And then you have mechanical. I just leave it set at electric first shutter. I haven't had any problem with it, but if you know more, <laughs> comment below and let me know what the other ones do because I just use the default setting. And the other, the last option is, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's basically if the SD card is in or out, it will open the shutter without an SD card or only with an SD card. I just leave it on on, so there has to be an SD card in the camera for it to work. Once you have all your settings dialed in, manual focus is in, it's tack sharp and you're ready to just get going, press the shutter button so it starts taking photos and you'll notice that the word timer appears in the top left corner. This indicates that the interval timer is going and that it'll continually take photos until you turn it off. And how do you turn it off? Well, you press menu between shots, go to interval timer and press disable, you're good to go. You can also turn your camera off if you want or just let it die once it's taken so many photos that the battery dies. Now your camera is done taking photos and you wanna edit them and create a time lapse with it. Well, let's get into the computer and see what we do with that. 
So the first step you're gonna do is you're gonna take your SD card, you're gonna put it into your reader, and you're going to drag and drop all of those photos onto your hard drive. This is what I do at least, you might do it somewhat differently, but you just wanna have all the photos on a hard drive and ready to go. I also create an additional folder called edited, that way I can then put the edited versions from Lightroom into here. Well, let's open Lightroom. You can see I've already imported all of these photos into Lightroom, but here's what you do. Go to import, uh, you're gonna find the folder. You see all these photos, they're already imported. Select them all, press import. I'm gonna just cancel this. Then we're gonna go to develop. Editing the photos, you can do a couple of ways. Let's say you did a time lapse in the day and there was no change in settings or light or anything like that. All the photos are relatively the same. So just take one of the photos, the first photo, edit it, click the first photo, press shift, and scroll to the very end, press shift and click, and then press sync. And then make sure the correct adjustments are done and press synchronize. It's really fast and easy. Now, if you did say a night transition where it went from day to night, what I do is go to like a middle photo. Let's say this one here, and then I'm gonna edit this photo. And then I'm gonna take this edit and sync it to everything. Cause it's kind of a mix between light and dark. And I'm gonna sync all of it to it, to the different photos, and it generally will work for the night and the day. But you might have to make some tweaks to get it to kind of look right. But that's okay, that just takes a little time. Now, once you have edited all your photos, you're gonna click the first one, you're gonna press Command or Control A to select them all, or you can press Shift and click the last one to select all of them. You're gonna right click, you're gonna go down to Export, Export, uh, you're gonna choose the file. So in this case, we're gonna go here, and this is why I created this other folder, AO2 Edited, and this is where we're gonna choose to, to edit them. Uh, I'm gonna put it at about 70% quality because I don't really need 100% quality because we're making a video, but if you do like 10, 20% quality, you get imperfections in the photos and you don't want that. It shows up in the video and it looks like crap. I, I tested it. So once you're done, press export. I already did it to save time, but let me tell you, have 20 minutes to, 20 minutes to an hour to kill. Like, go make some coffee, go have dinner, go out with friends or whatever, because it does it does take a long time and your computer's gonna start heating up and spinning up and smoking and all kinds of crazy things because it's just, a, it's a lot. It's a lot of exporting, but it's worth it. Once all the photos are done exporting and your computer has stopped smoking and maybe cooled down a little, we're gonna jump into Premiere Pro and I'm gonna show you a quick way to import these photos where you don't have to import every single one and then adjust the side, it's crazy. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to our little panel here where all our files are. We're gonna press Command or Control I to import. Then we're gonna go to our time lapses. We're gonna go to our edited folder right here. And then we're gonna click the first photo in the sequence. So you see 001, 002, 003, and so on. They're all in sequence, all the way down. This is why they need to all be in their, its own folder. You're gonna click the first one, you're gonna press Options, click Image Sequence. This is going to, when you import it, bring in every image in one sequence. So press Import, and boom, there we go. I'm gonna drag this onto the timeline, and look. Done, there is our time lapse all done right there. All the photos, everything put together beautifully. You can see it's a little choppy, but that's because it's a lot of data. So if we were to render this file, it will play super smooth. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add some music. And I use Epidemic Sound for all of my music and sound effect needs. If you guys are looking for royalty-free music, check out the link in the description for this video. And there's a 30-day free trial where you can get unlimited music, sound effects for all of your video needs. It is awesome. I've been using them for like two years. This is not sponsored. It's just, I love them. They're great. I continue to use them. So once you've added the music, you wanna add some like depth to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the first frame. We're gonna press scale and position. Go to the last frame, scale and position. Uh, let's say the end point we want is right here. Also, this whole thing is crooked. 
So we're gonna straighten it out. That looks better. And then let's go to the first frame. Oh, hmm, that looks crooked too. I wonder if it just changes. Or maybe I'm just crooked. <laughs> so, look, there we go. Okay, right. that looks fine for now, just for this video. And then we're gonna scale in. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna start over here and up a little. That way it kind of pulls out and over. And then once that's done, let's go ahead and render it here so you can see the difference. This, this can take a while or not a while, so I'm just gonna fast forward it to the next part. Now that we've got it rendered, let's go ahead and play it. And you'll notice that the movement in the scale and position creates more dimension. Adding the music, which you can't hear right now because, well, it's muted, but adding music creates more interest and creates kind of a, a more fun video. And that's it. Once you're done with that, we're gonna press, we're going to press Command M on the keyboard. We're going to select where to save it. We'll just, wherever that is, and press export, and you're good to go. Once it's done exporting, you can sit back, relax, and enjoy your awesome time lapse. And then, if there was a photo in there that you're like, ooh, damn, that's a great photo, you go back into Lightroom, and you find a photo, and you do what I did. Boom, beautiful photo, and there's your Instagram post to advertise your awesome time lapse. Anyways, that's all there is to it. Super easy, export and enjoy your awesome time lapse that you just created. But I hope this answers all of your questions. If you have any other ones that I went too fast or wasn't sure or you weren't sure on, go ahead and comment below and let me know. Don't forget to like the video if it was helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Back to my bearded self because there's a few more vlogs of going through Africa that I enjoy. And do you like the beard or not the beard? I like the beard, but let me know. Anyways, have fun guys and here's the final time lapse for you to enjoy. Oh,